Reparentification and integration. These are the two things we need to do to heal. Um, we realize by going over what are the core needs of children or what are our core needs that we felt were not met the most and um, by identifying that by identifying what we have historically throughout the course of our lives searched for the most companionship affection longing understanding um, validation all these things um, a sense of community familiarity all these things um, and the more we crave that the more things we crave and the more intensely we crave them the more has there has been a deficit in the way we were brought up so now what we need to do is to be the strict parent who enforces boundaries who forces discipline and rules and order and stability um, through morals and um, integrity through uh, giving ourselves this carrot and stick like if you find it really hard to clean your room you do a little at a time and then you do something right after as the carrot which would be something you love like um, having pizza or ice cream or watching your favorite show or um, getting some reward like you would do to incentivize a child so what when the child does a small task that um, helps the child individuate um, take care of himself or herself independently then you give the child a little treat according to what the child wants and when the child doesn't do that good thing you can take it back but for that part of negative reinforcement I would say that if your inner child is really 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 damaged which is the case with most people who have CPTSD then um, you kind of need to be really really gentle and compassionate so while you're reparentifying there is that strict disciplinarian part and this is why I feel like when you've had so much negative reinforcement and your inner critic is so big your inner child is so damaged um, the child inside you is feeling sad abandoned depressed anxious hurt um, inadequate all these things then you need to tread very very lightly so realizing that uh, positive reinforcement works uh, negative you've already had a lot of that and to the point where it has crushed your ability to um, do things to ask for things unless you know that you will be successful unless you feel like you will do it perfectly so realize that this positive reinforcement will help you you also need to be that kind um, nurturing compassionate loving presence for yourself so on days when you do not feel up to the mark you have to use both sides so you have to incentivize yourself and remind yourself of your goals and your commitment to yourself but then also um, be gentle with yourself and negotiate with yourself in a way that is non-judgmental non-critical accepting um, gentle and be like okay I feel really tired today I feel really nauseous today I feel really sick today so today I'm gonna do this one thing for myself or today I'm like I'm just gonna spend a few hours um, you know just in bed whatever you need 
you need to show that child that inner being within you that higher self that is witnessing everything that what you need in the moment matters to you because you have been taught that what you feel need and desire is secondary to what other people want and you have learned to function that way so now you need to teach yourself that what you want matters and within reason you're going to act on it not only have you acknowledged and accepted it not only have you not criticized and said this is stupid this is silly this is unnecessary you're being lazy you're being um you're not sticking up to whatever the standard you're not being perfect you're not being productive etc 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 but you're also um acting on it and allowing yourself to really experience that where um when people don't care, take care of our needs they don't pay attention to that we don't pay attention to our own needs so we learn to shove ourselves aside so this is bringing ourselves back to ourselves this is the integration so we are integrating through the parents we didn't have we are parts of ourselves through the parents we wanted the loving kindness accepting non-judgmental um understanding protective presence that we wanted and integrating that with um ourselves and the little children the stubborn little impulsive beings and learning to bring them all together and somehow work with them and that's also what schema therapy says um, in terms of and it's been really successful with personality disorders to realize that because our cells have split into these parts that perform various functions for us they're not integrated and we need to have some combining force that integrates all those parts and that is basically what we give to ourselves through all the different things we do so not only through self care journaling meditation all these things but also through of course like body based things like yoga dance uh breathing but also through these positive reinforcing commandments um that we hold as sacred as divine and they are coming from this sanctuary this safe space that is ourselves um that is an overseeing presence that gives us comfort so we imagine like this little part of us that is scared and wants to be loved wants to be perfect wants to um be approved of and then there's this higher self our older adult self that is aware of the realities of the world of the consequences of our actions of the words we speak of the things we do and that adult is coordinating with the child in a way that is loving accepting um cherishing the child and not pushing the child not intimidating the child not bullying the child to be able to work together in that manner to communicate like you would with a child with the gentle kindness and be like yes i know you feel really tired i understand i love you i'm here with you that really really helps so that is also the integration and this way we can integrate to realizing what the different parts of us are saying what functions they're performing when they come up um 
when do they start going in conflict more um what are those things they may be romantic relationships they may be really stressful situations they may be family dynamics um and managing and avoiding triggers but also learning how those parts interact with each other so in schema therapy they like teach you how um different parts can have different names and different personalities so you name them and they have like different personalities so um they come on at different times my understanding how they interact with each other like how does the critical part hold the child back that wants to just go do spontaneous things and be wild and free and explore how does that part that is the super ego or the inner critic or the um that voice that keeps saying that taunts you that you're not good enough people don't want you um and it also applies to other people when we are really critical of other people it's usually also that we're the most critical of ourselves so it works both ways because we have internalized that we had this like need for love the same way we have need for food and when that did not get met there were other systems that were created in us and that was um that system of negative thoughts that also stops us when we're trying to go ahead and do something new we're trying to like do something that was um traumatic in the past like perhaps relationships all these things will come up and realizing that and working with that is going to help you versus just ignoring it and not knowing what is going on um so integrating all those parts seeing how they converse how they interact um uh, how they work together with uh when you feel numb like for bpd i feel like when i was going through my most numb period i was in my detached protector mode and in that mode i felt like i was on autopilot i felt very 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 detached because um i was in a lot of stress and that's how i protected myself by having this flat effect this blank kind of like face like nothing affects me but inside what was happening was completely the opposite like i was devastated and that detached protector comes on when i feel really really awkward like i go into a situation and i say it like i'm going if it like if it scares my inner child to a sufficient degree or if it my inner child is terrified then the detached protector goes on and it's like sure this conversation needs to end right now or like this kind of um if someone is abusing me in the past and now i just kind of like just want to get up and leave but in the past when someone abuses me like in narcissistic relationships initially i would get sad and be like no don't say that blah 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 blah, blah. like then i'd start crying my inner child would get like triggered and then i would get angry how dare you say that and then i would get like you know and then eventually i would be like okay i've had enough why don't you just leave me alone and that is the detached protector which is like very matter of fact to the point precise is not emotionally 
charged is very like blunt and it's like okay this conversation is over now and I remember once like in college someone was breaking up with me and inside I was like dying and the face of it I looked them dead in the eye and I was like sure like they would be like oh I hope you'll be okay and you know I'm breaking up blah 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 and I would be like yeah like I would just have that look like and I would look them straight in the eye and be like yeah absolutely like nothing got to me and as soon as I turned around and walked away I just started like crying like insanely so that is kind of like the detached protector. Similarly, there are different modes. Um, if you have CPTSD, you also have these different modes, whether it's the freeze or the fight mode, and the detached protector is quite similar to the freeze mode, where um, when there's too much emotion, you just kind of become numb. And that helps you get through that moment. And later you may be like, why didn't I react? Why didn't I do anything? What was I thinking? Um, or later you may come around to processing it. But in that moment, it's just what it was. So. Yeah, integrating all these parts is really, really helpful. Uh, and it's also like how the shamans say when you go through trauma parts of your soul go into different directions and we must integrate those different parts so and call them back to ourselves and um, we don't need to take ayahuasca for that um, this is kind of how you bring it back to yourself you feel we try to get in touch with that. It's kind of how like they do um, chair work in therapy, where um, you have a con your adult self has a conversation with your um, little infant self or your teenage self, and you communicate back and forth, and you ask questions, and um, you communicate. That is a very powerful, common technique that is used. So if you're familiar with that kind of the same but just you can do it with yourself when you need to and if you get too triggered you can cut it short and do something like um, that calms you down so that will help in that way so anyways uh, that's those are the two really important things which I feel like are very, very basic to our healing process. Reparentifying and integrating our lost, damaged, broken parts so our shattered soul can come together and our fragmentation can end once and for all. Whether we bring in our shadow selves, our subconscious, our programs, our patterns, our um, histories, our traumas, all of it. The more we can bring in back in, restore ourselves to ourselves, we can once again be whole the way we were supposed to be. So um, this is me, Story Sensei, and I create cosmic flow and flings open the doors of your perception. So ta-ta. Bye-bye and have a great one.